Jesus himself even. What is it all about? What does this mean? Uh, God has always got a good plan, a merciful plan. His plan also often involves testing, testing of our faith, that we would confess our faith in him and repeat to him his gracious promises that you love all people, you have mercy on all people, you care for even me. We're going to want some nicknames today. Also, some some little nicknames. You hear the word little dogs, um, but it's a good name. So don't, don't get all worried about it. God has a great plan always, and that plan is evol involves you and me. As we receive His gracious mercy through the Lord's Supper today, and uh, receive His very body and blood for all of you who have been confirmed, and, and can graciously come and receive this, uh, this great forgiveness and salvation for your souls. So we begin with the hymn Number two, 613, to the omniscient Lord of all, we do cry out for mercy, and he gives it to us plentifully. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But we confess our sins. God is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, 
O oh, Almighty God and merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a calm ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. To you, O Lord, I call. My rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cry to you for help. Blessed be the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my shield. In him my heart trusts. I am helped. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is the strength of his people. Thanks and praise to you, O God, for making your house a place of prayer for all peoples. You have blessed us with your grace and salvation. Through the gospel, make us voices of invitation to all people, that with us they may serve you with joy and gladness all our days. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is found. In Isaiah chapter 56, beginning with the first verse. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for my salvation is about to come, 
and my righteousness to be revealed. Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with Psalm 67. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. that your way may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John. One more time, and we'll invite everyone to sing with us. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3:16. Right, let's see each other. Old Testament reading that we just heard from Isaiah talks about God having mercy on not just some people but all people. He says other people will come to you. Who are those other people? Who are Gentiles. For God loves all the people. And his promises were made very clear in the Old Testament but sometimes people didn't really understand that when Jesus was with them. In fact, when a Canaanite woman came up and asked for mercy, we've heard that word, uh, that phrase so many times, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy today. The disciples said, send her away, send her away. She's bothering us. She's just making a lot of noise. She wasn't a Jew. She was a Gentile. But does God love all people? Right. But he was going to test her. And he had a special test for her. And so, so he didn't immediately answer her, but that didn't stop this woman, this, this Canaanite woman. She, she called out even more, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me, my daughter. She has a demon. She's possessed and she needs your help. Save her. You can see her crying out for mercy, kneeling before Christ. Well, Jesus responded in a, in a, in a way that we might not understand right away. And so I brought something to help us understand. I got a little doggy here. You can hold. And of course, we got all these other types of uh, dogs that, that kids like to play with. We got, what's his name again? Um, Rubble. Rubble. The Paw Patrol dogs, right? Kids love Paw Patrol. Rubble, and I think I got Sky in here, and Marshall. And we love our animals, we love our pets. We like to play with their animals. They love us. They always come up to us, always wagging their tails, right? Always willing to greet us with, a, with love. Well, you know what? They're our house pets. They're part of our family. And that's what Jesus calls this Canaanite woman. He calls her a little dog. <gasps> what? That doesn't sound very nice. 
But that didn't stop her at all. Because she said, even the little dogs are part of God's house. We get to eat the little crumbs that fall from the master's table. We get to eat the, get eat the, the food too, because we're still part of the family. And that's what Jesus wanted to hear. Oh, woman, great is your faith. Yes, you also are part of my family. I love all people, Jews and Gentiles alike. For God so loved the whole world. And he said, may it be to you, your daughter is healed. And she went home, and her daughter was completely well. So, you know what? We're just like the little dogs. We humble ourselves before God, but we're so happy that we even get to have a little crumb from the master's table of his mercy, of his love. As we receive today, his mercy through the, the bread and the wine and our forgiveness. And may God strengthen you. And may he continue to, to have mercy on you. And may you show that mercy to others. Amen. I say then, has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. If by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh, and save some of them. For if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? Concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but concerning the election, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience. Even so, these also have now been disobedient, that through the mercy shown you, they also may obtain mercy. For God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his mercy, from all those, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And our text for today is from our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 15. I begin with verse 25. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh, woman, Great is your faith, let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. So far, our text. Jesus always has a great and merciful plan, doesn't he? We, not, we, we might not understand it at first, but when it's revealed to us, we are absolutely astonished. A couple of weeks ago, we saw how he fed over 5,000 people, including men and, and, and women and children, the whole family, with just a few loaves of bread and fish. And Jesus put his disciples to test by telling them, you go feed them. How? We can't do it. They, they responded despondently. It's impossible for us. Again, Jesus did this to test them, to humble them, so that they would turn to him always for he provides for us body and soul. He is the bread of life. And he multiplied the bread, fed all the people. He performed a great impossible miracle that we could never do. What could Jesus do with a few crumbs from the master's table? 
He can do great things for the Canaanite woman, for all of us. And then last week we heard how Jesus sent his disciples on a boat trip across the lake to get to the other side of uh, where he was going to do more ministry. And then he allowed a storm to give them great problems and great fear. They couldn't make it against the wind. They were helpless, as we remember. He cried out for mercy. Help us, dear Lord. God had a great plan, didn't he? As he humbled them by testing them, their faith was strengthened. For who came walking on the water but Jesus himself? And he calmed the storm as he entered the boat. And what was their confession of faith? Truly, you are the Son of God. Truly, you are the Son of God. And that was the confession of faith that this Canaanite woman came to Jesus with. Didn't she say that? Lord, son of, son of David, have mercy on me. Lord, he is the Son of God. My Lord, Son of David, he is the Messiah, the promised one. You see, this woman was going through a storm in her life, too. Could Jesus have a plan for her also? Was she included in, in his plans? Was this a humbling testing of her faith to bring forth a strong confession of her faith? Does Jesus have a plan for you? Are you sometimes put to test in the storms of your life so that you would be humble? and cry out even more and repeat to him his gracious promises to you. You know, back in June, when we were in chapter 10 of Matthew, as we've been going through the book of Matthew, we heard Jesus sending out his 12 apostles and he gave them these instructions. Do not go into the way of the Gentiles and do not enter into the city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. Pretty clear, isn't it? I don't want you going to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but to the lost sheep of Israel. It doesn't sound like the Gentiles were part of Jesus' plan. And Jesus repeats these same words now in our gospel when he responds to the woman's cry. I was not sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What? What's going on here? Well, you could misinterpret Jesus' plan if you don't read all of Scripture, if you just focus on one verse. And sometimes that's what people do. They just get focused on one verse instead of reading the entire book of uh, God's book, uh, His Word, the Word of God. And so we hear in John 10, where Jesus says, And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one, sh one flock and one shepherd. Who could these other sheep be? Well, we know, don't we? The Gentiles. This was most beautifully prophesied in the Old Testament. And we've been hearing these prophecies a couple weeks ago from Isaiah chapter 55. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and the nations who do not know you shall run to you. God was revealing this plan little by little. It would not only include the chosen people of Israel, but also the Gentiles. And we heard that again today from our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 56 and these most beautiful words. As he says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And again from Psalm 67 which we read, let the peoples praise you. Let all the peoples praise you. God's, God's love is for all people. And so that's what this Canaanite woman relied on. The word of God that she had heard, as we know from Mark 7, in the parallel account, she had heard about Jesus and his miracles and his teaching. And the Holy Spirit gave her faith to believe and confess. But she was also part of God's plan. So, Jesus not only seeks out the lost sheep of Israel, 
But he also seeks out the Gentiles. It's not an either or, but it's a both and. Jesus has a plan. First, the Jews go to the lost sheep of, 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 of Israel. And that's so clear to us in Romans chapter 2, in verse 10, where Paul says, he gives us the big picture. He says, to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, wrath, tribulation, anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Greek. No difference. All who reject God will be punished. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. No partiality. And yet, Jesus seems to be a little bit partial here, doesn't he? By giving her the cold shoulder, not answering her right away. Well, this was a test of her faith, wasn't it? She had already called Jesus Lord and Messiah. She confessed her faith in him, but Jesus wanted to strengthen her even more. And he does the same for all of us. As our faith is tested, that we would rely on more and more upon his promises each and every day that we would call upon him in our prayers each and every day trust in him even more so jesus tests her that she would search out those promises hold on to them tightly you know whenever you catch a flight a plane flight to, to you have to go through a process of boarding a plane right and you're usually, you're usually put into a group number. And group, group one boards first, group two, and so on. And you wait your turn until your group is called. Well, Jesus gives this Canaanite some hope. She's in a group. But it's the very end, the very last group to board. How does he do this? He says, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Does that sound like a, a yes answer or a no answer to you? Luther says there's more yes than no in this answer. Jesus is giving her a lifeline here. He's saying, you don't have priority boarding. You don't get to sit at the table and eat the children's bread. The little dogs don't get a plate. What? There's some crumbs. You know, in today's society, if you call someone a little dog, <laughs> they might actually get angry with you, right? People don't put up with name calling very much these days. They might, they might uh, pick a fight with you. Well, this, this Canaanite woman, she didn't get angry. She didn't throw anything at Jesus. She didn't walk away. She didn't have any choice words for him. But she humbled him herself to him. Yes, Lord. That's true. That was her answer. She agreed. She assented. It's true. I am a little dog. It's true. I don't deserve to be at the master's table. I am a sinner. And I can't help my daughter overcome the demon that she has. I'm powerless, helpless. That's her answer too. I am a little dog. I don't deserve to be at the master's table. I'm a sinner. I can't help myself out of the the great debt of sin that I have. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. And that was her response. Oh, I just want a little crumb. That's all. There's a yet. There's something for me too. And yet, I get something. I'm a believer too. I'm in the master's house. Even though I'm, I'm a little dog, I'm still part of the family. Even though I'm a Gentile, that's enough for me. A crumb of your mercy is all I want. And Jesus loves to hear his promises repeated back to, to him. He loves to, to hear you and me admit our unworthiness, plead for mercy with humble hearts, and then receive with great faith his promises that you are forgiven. You are a child of God. Great is your faith, Jesus said to the woman. 
Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed at that very moment. Priority boarding is yours. Come aboard. You know, when, when you're waiting to, get to board, what usually happens first is, is they say veterans, uh, people in wheelchairs, women with small children, come aboard. Those are the first ones that get, get boarded. Jesus saying, woman, with a demon-possessed child, welcome aboard. Your child is healed. Jesus' plan is always a both and. He died for all people. God loves all people, as we sang from John 3.16. And when he calls us little dogs, it's a beautiful nickname. In Spanish, you know, people love to, to call each other nicknames from birth. And, and maybe you've heard some of them, and you wonder, how could, you, how could somebody call people each other these names? But it's, it's a loving name. Because maybe a little child is born, and, and the little child is sort of chubby when they're born, so, so this name sticks with them their whole life. Gordo, gordo, or, or flaco. That means, that means chubby, or flaco is skinny, or, or cachetón, if you have chubby cheeks. And so, so that name just sticks with them throughout their life, and, and when you hear it, you know it's said in love because it's said from your parents or from your friends. Sometimes we're called other nicknames of animals, like a mariposa, right? Pojito, uh, right? A butterfly, a little, little, little chicken, or puma, right? Or <laughs> this one always gets me when uh, elderly people, husband and wife, call each other viejo, vieja, <laughs> old woman, old man, right? <laughs> but they do it out of love because they spent so many loving years together. Years have passed together. They love each other. Jesus calls us his pet dogs, <laughs> and we love it. We love our dogs, don't we? They're part of our family. Children purposely leave a few crumbs to fall from the table. I used to do that when I was little, too. And as soon as we said the, the, the closing prayer, and we said amen, our dog would run into the house, gather up anything that was under the table. That was, that was his clue, amen. Yes, God calls us his people, his, his sheep, the other sheep. And to be called a sheep is the greatest thing, for he is our good shepherd. He feeds us in the green pastures of his word and sacraments. He gives us his very body and his bread under the bread and in with and under the wine for our forgiveness of sins. He wants us to come to his table often, for we are tested often. We are tempted often. We need his mercy often. He wants us to receive his very body and blood often. He invites us to come. He loves to hear us say, Yes, Lord, I believe. I believe this is your very body and blood for my forgiveness. Amen. It's all part of God's gracious plan for you. He gives you His mercy that you would also be merciful to others and give His mercy to all people. For we don't know who God is going to call into His sheepfold, part of His sheepfold. The Canaanite woman didn't seem like the logical cho choice to the disciples. And yet she heard His teaching, believed, and she came looking for Jesus. But in reality, Jesus went looking for her and brought her in, brought her into his sheepfold. You know, in the verses right before our epistle reading in Romans chapter 11, Paul calls the Gentiles a wild olive tree that was grafted in by the grace of God. Unbelieving Jewish branches, branches were broken off and wild branches were grafted in and nourished by the root, Jesus Christ. Jesus is telling the Gentiles, now don't, don't think you're, you should boast because now you're part of the, of the olive tree. No. Just as easily as those Jewish branches were broken off, you could also reject Jesus and be broken off. Humble yourself always. And Paul is wanting his own people to, to be jealous, to see that Gentiles are brought in, that they would repent, that Jews would repent and turn to God, that you have mercy on all. 
God knows who, wants, who he wants to bring into his kingdom. As we heard, God has committed them all to disobedience, that he might have mercy on all. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. God wants all people to recognize their disobedience, you and me. Humble ourselves before him, repent like the Canaanite woman, plead for mercy, and then as a, as, as a child of God, receive his mercy our, through our baptism, through the Lord's Supper, as little, little children of God, little dogs in the house of God. As you confess your faith on him and come to receive his gracious promises, God also tells you, great is your faith. It is done for you. Your sins are forgiven. You are healed. You are part of my, my sheepfold. You have priority boarding in God's kingdom. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasseth all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. stand and sing together. What a friend we have in Jesus. pray for all the people of God, the church, those who have been called out of the darkness of sin and death and into the light and life of the kingdom that is eternal. Gracious King, we praise you as the creator and sustainer of life. From the womb to the tomb and at every stage of life, your hand is upon your own, giving us all that we need to support our daily lives. United as one, we praise you, O Father, Lord, in your mercy. Savior King, we praise you as the Savior and Redeemer of life. Your nail-scarred hands and pierced side give evidence of the lengths to which you have journeyed in order to seek and save the lost. 
made right with you by the shedding of your innocent, innocent blood, we are recipients of what we could never earn nor deserve, united as one. We praise you, Lord Jesus, Lord in your mercy. Holy Spirit, we praise you as the restorer and the renewer of life. You claim your family through the outpouring of mercy that we experience in holy baptism. You enable our hearts to receive your word and our mouths to confess your truth before our world. United as one, we praise you, Holy Spirit, Lord in your mercy. Sovereign King, you see all things in heaven and on earth. Nothing is outside your watch and reign. Bless our families, our workplaces, our schools, and our church. Sustain the life of our community and guide the leaders who labor among us for the blessing of all. Protect those in harm's way, especially the members of our military, that they may rest in your promises. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty King, you strengthen. your strength is unmatchable and your power unfathomable. Break down any barrier of heart and mind that would distract us from seeing your work in our midst. Drawn to us yourself, drawn to yourself for restoration, those who hunger and thirst, those in need of food and shelter, those who experience loss of employment, and all who struggle to find purpose in their lives. Cause your word to reach to the ends of the earth, bringing your saving gospel to bear on the lives of all people, and granting salvation to all who confess Jesus as Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy. Healing King, you stoop down from he your heavenly throne to dwell among us in Christ. As you continue to bind up the brokenhearted and heal their wounds, we pray for all who are sick and suffering in any way. Especially, we lift to your loving care our brothers and sisters, Don Herbslab and Renee. And we also lift up to your loving care Suzanne and Belly. We pray for, for also Carolyn Green and for Erlene and Harriet and Mildred and Loretta. We ask that you would give special comfort and mercy to the family of, of Dale Meyer as they also looked forward to the resurrection of, of, of all who believe in you and their loved one. Help these and all others whom we name in our hearts to know the love you have for all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend ourselves and all those for whom we pray trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You have blessed us, gracious God, with the invitation to come to your holy house as a place of prayer for all peoples. You gather us from the ends of the earth, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, that we may feast at the table of him who was crucified and then raised to life again for our salvation. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, Adore, of your name. Sing Hosanna in the highest. Sing Hosanna to the Lord. Truly blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. By your grace alone, we receive the salvation that has come to us in the person of your Son our Lord Jesus Christ. He has delivered us so that all who trust in you may receive the promised inheritance of life everlasting. Gathered to remember Christ's sacrifice for our salvation, we ask you, O Lord, forgive us, renew us, and lead us. Standing together in your holy house of prayer, help us to know the unity you give through your Son's body and blood. Hear us now as we pray in his name and in the words he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Jesus Christ, true Lamb of God, you take the sin of the world away. This is the true blood of Jesus, shed for you, for the remission of all your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of Jesus, shed for you, for the remission of all your sins. In this holy body, your precious blood, strengthen and preserve you, in the true faith, and so life everlasting, go now in peace. Amen.
God's triune name resounding through all eternity. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, our good and gracious King, that you refresh us through this sacred meal. And we implore you that of your mercy, you continue to make your deliverance known to us and to all peoples, so that we may live in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, yeah. 